Welcome. Again, this is the Avoiding Procrastination Workshop, um, and we will go ahead and get started. For those few people that came in, I introduced myself. My name is Patricia Hartley, and I'm the coordinator um, in the Student Academic Resource Center. Perfect timing. Welcome. Um, I am just now getting started with the Avoiding Procrastination Workshop. So we'll go ahead and get started. How many people know where we're located or have utilized our services? Raise your hand. Okay, perfect. So we're located in Howard Phillips Hall. Everybody kind of know where Howard Phillips Hall is? If you don't know, we're one of the three buildings that's surrounding the reflection pond. We are located on the first floor of Howard Phillips Hall. So that's where you can come and you can actually utilize our services. That's where our SARC lab is located. And then I'm going to first start off by giving you an overview of our services, okay? So I'll talk to you a little bit about what SARC is. I'll also tell you about how you cannot procrastinate, um, give you some different tips and some skills that you can actually utilize here at UCF, and then of course we're going to open it up for Q&A. I like for them to be interactive, so if, if there's any point in time during the workshop that you want to say something or you have a question, raise your hand, feel free, and we can make this more of a conversational workshop, all right? All right. So first things first, these are some of the services that we have to offer, including peer tutoring. That's our um, main bulk of what we offer. We offer that through something called supplemental instruction as well as SARC peer tutoring. We have three facilities on campus. We're located in the science, the, excuse me, the College of Engineering and Computer Science. We're also located in the Veterans Academic Resource Center and also in Howard Phillips Hall as well, okay? You do not have to be a veteran to utilize those services, just to let you know. Um, and then you don't have to be a college of engineering, computer science student or major in order to take advantage of those services either, okay? So all of our tutoring is free, it is group tutoring, and it's open to all of our students here on campus. We also have academic success workshops related to this, as well as learning skills consultation, and then online academic support. 
support which is an additional resource that you can take advantage of if you need additional services or information okay so i'll talk to you first about some of our academic assistance peer tutoring peer tutoring as i told you before is located in three um, places here on campus we um, primarily tutor in our stem courses so that's our science technology engineering and math courses and then of course classes that have like the high drop fail withdrawal rate um, don't forget if you are a math person or if you are a math major you can also take advantage of the math lab that we have here on campus and also our writing center serves as a great resource for any sort of writing um, issues or things that come up when you have class okay supplemental instruction is also free um, the difference between peer tutoring and start supplemental instruction is supplemental instructors actually sit in the class with you so they probably made some sort of an announcement at this point in time at the beginning of the semester to tell you they're the SI leader that's going to be in your class um, and then SI allows us to have partnerships with professors in some of the historically difficult courses that have like the high drop fail withdrawal rate welcome so learning assistance okay um, learning skills consultations, I like to think of them more as a one-on-one -on -one workshop, right? It's specifically for you, towards your needs, um, whether you're somebody who needs help um, with time management more on a one-on-one -on -one level, or maybe you need um, to talk a little bit about some study skills or some study tips that you can take advantage of, okay? Um, other subjects include academic decision-making, goal-setting as well, and then also like motivation. The good thing about this is that you can also earn link loop. So if you are a freshman, you can take advantage of this. As I said before, you can document it on the evaluation that you'll have afterwards, and then we'll make sure to push that out to whomever you request it to be sent to. Welcome to a job. Okay, so are you a procrastinator? These are some of the questions that we have come up with. Just kind of, you know, put on your mind to ask yourself, are you a procrastinator? Do you act as though, as if, um, as though you ignore a task and it will go away. A lot of the times we think that if we just ignore it, it will go away. Do you underestimate the work that's involved in the task or overestimate your ability to um, relations in relationship to the task? Like how long is actually going to take you? Anybody in here do that? No, only a couple people. Okay, okay. So you're probably being honest. I understand. Um, do you deceive yourself by substituting on worthy one worthy activity for another? So say for example. Um, you get the sudden urge to clean. You've been needing to clean your apartment, but you have a test that's gonna happen on Friday. It's Tuesday, but then all of a sudden you look around your apartment and you say, you know what, I need to wash clothes. I need to hang this up. I need to, you know, scrub my bathroom, whatever it may be, right? But for some reason, when the task that you're supposed to be doing comes up, one that you're supposed to have done maybe in the past that's not so, much of a big deal right now just kind of come to the forefront of your mind and you put that first when you technically should be studying for that test for that Friday, right? Um, do you um, say you'll do it tomorrow? How many people claim or pretend like they're going to do it tomorrow? We always say that. It's kind of like that movie. There's always tomorrow. But if we go ahead and start things today, then we can get started on even sooner, right? So some other questions that you may ask yourself may be, have you ever said, mm, I need to have some well-earned fun first. So you got your friends, they're going to go out to the club on a Monday night. They don't have class on Tuesday. You know you have a test at 8 o'clock that next day that you probably will pretend like you study for it on Sunday night. So you're prepared, like you're ready for it. But you know you have class at 8 o'clock, and if you stay out late, that might cause you to lose some sleep, and you might be a little tired for that 8 o'clock test. Is that a smart thing to do? Right, it's not a smart thing to do. However, you could say to yourself, oh, I could stay until 11 o'clock, then I can leave, and then I can go home and get the rest that I need. Correct? But how many of us really do that? No. So, <laughs> so just kind of keep those things in mind. I'm just trying to get your mind to just sort of think of some of the questions that may come up that can help you identify whether you are a procrastinator or not. Have you ever said this homework will be easier to do when I'm in the mood, right? How many people try to wait for the mood to do it? Yeah, don't wait for the mood. You can't, <laughs> we're at a place in our life now where you can't wait until the feeling comes up to do it, right? Um, so you can't base everything off your feeling. Okay, so why do we procrastinate? Anybody want to talk about why do we procrastinate? Because mm, you always think there's tomorrow, right? It's always tomorrow, right? Okay, what are some other reasons? Yes, ma'am? We 
don't know how to manage tasks properly. It's a good one. Anybody else? Yes, sir. It kind of gives you control over the things you think you don't have control over. Like, you don't really feel like doing it. You're like, well, I'll do it when I want to do it. Ah, you think you got options, a little bit of control, right? But you don't realize that you can get out of control if you don't make sure that you're managing your time, right? Yes, ma'am. Did you have one? No? Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. sleep 
from procrastination. It's like a little cycle. You see how we have it on here where it tells you part one is when you procrastinate, right? And then the second part of it is that you're self-criticism, self-anger, so you're upset at yourself for procrastinating, which could mean you either gonna maybe ask for an additional deadline, right? So that you have an extension, bless you. Or maybe you um, are gonna just say, forget it, I can just take not turning in this assignment, okay? But then it still makes you self-criticize and maybe you also are self-upset um, at yourself. Then you have low self-esteem, that's like what happens next, right? Because you're upset, you know you're not gonna perform as well because you procrastinated and you're mad at yourself. And then you get discouragement, right? So you finally sometimes get to a point where you say, I'm not going to turn that in. I'm not going to worry about it, or you're disappointed in what you did turn in because you know that was not your best work. So these are some ways that you can overcome procrastination. So one thing you can do is have a self-talk with yourself. So it's normal for people to just kind of procrastinate from time to time, but every now and then you got to motivate yourself, right? You got to be like your own motivator and say to yourself, oh, if I don't do this now, I have a student organization meeting tomorrow. I'm going to be busy with my son tonight. I'm going to be um, going home this weekend to visit my family down south. And it's due on Tuesday. So technically, I don't really have time to wait. I need to finish this now, right? Whatever you need to say to yourself in order to motivate yourself to get started, talk to yourself. Say it. I'm not telling you you have to talk out loud, but I'm a talk out loud person to myself. So I'll say things like, you need to get started on this now because if you don't, you won't have time later. Whatever stern voice you need to use, whatever works for you in order to help to motivate you, talk to yourself. Let yourself know. Just as some people, of course, you can't eat a whole birthday cake at one time, some jobs just cannot be done unless you break them up. And it's more manageable, right? So that's the purpose of breaking them up is that they make it, a, the task is a lot more manageable for you Right? And then also you feel more comfortable because you have an outline for yourself and you see exactly the vision of this project, okay? Another way that some people um, have tried to make sure they overcome procrastination is to begin with an easy or an enjoyable or like a least distasteful piece of the job just in order to get started. So maybe you like the research part for your papers, but you don't like the part where you have to actually put the information together and write the paper, right? So maybe you do good with your lit reviews, you do good with finding your resources, your articles that you need for your paper, or your supporting documentation, but the part where you actually have to write it, maybe that is the challenging part for you, right? One of the things that I tell people to do, I know that they wanna start like with the easiest job first, which I think that that's a very manageable way, but anytime you're in a class, a course and they talk about an assignment that you immediately feel overwhelmed about, I challenge you to start on that task immediately. I don't anticipate, I don't say, I wouldn't even say wait. If the teacher talked about it in class, when class is over, I would recommend you go to that professor immediately. Whatever questions that come up for you at the time while they were explaining or after class so you can talk to them about it, I would recommend you ask those questions then just to kind of help you to relieve some of the pressure of this is an overwhelming assignment, or this is a lot to do, this is my first 10 page paper, I've never had to do a paper this long before. They want me to do APA style. APA style is a challenge for me. I, I'm accustomed to MLA style, right? But the, the, the bottom line is that there's resources here on campus that can help you through all that stuff. But if you take the time to not be a procrastinator, that will allow those resources here on campus to work that much better for you, if you know what I mean. Also, many procrastinators have realized that working with somebody else makes it less likely. How many people in here have assignments in class where you have to work in groups? Anybody? If you're going to graduate school, I can tell you right now, a lot of it is group work and paper, okay? Um, now, it does vary from major to major, but you're gonna be writing papers and you're gonna be doing group work. Um, it can be a challenge sometimes when you're working in a group with somebody and they are not doing what they're supposed to do because what happens? It puts the entire group behind, correct? But there are some people when you actually have somebody else that's holding you accountable, you do better because you feel like, oh, I don't wanna let that person down or, oh, they're depending on me, they're relying on me. So sometimes in order to not procrastinate, we can put other people in our group or on our team to help us through a project so that we don't procrastinate, okay? Um, it can also be that you will come to, to realize that many Making a commitment to something
somebody or setting a deadline for completing a task is one way to make procrastination uh, more difficult. So it is known that for many people, setting a goal results in motivation. So um, maybe you can, I was talking to you about self-talk, maybe you can even trick yourself into thinking that something is due a little bit earlier than what it really is, right? So if you're one of those people where you see deadlines and you say, oh, I still have time. Oh, I still have time. Well, maybe you can set a deadline for yourself that's a week earlier than what it really is, right? Can you imagine like being done with the paper, you go to, to class, you turn it in, you forgot that it was supposed to be early, that deadline is early, and then the teacher says, oh, it's not due today. What, what are some resources or some things that you could do still with your paper to make it that much better if you're already done? Yes, ma'am. I love it. You heard her, she said, drop by the writing center, which is right here on campus, in order to have them review the paper that you're done with early so that they can make any corrections on it and you'll, your paper will be that much better, okay? So that's, those are some tricks that I wanted to share with you about what you can do to overcome and avoid procrastination. Some other ways is to maybe set up a relaxing, enjoyable environment for yourself, right? Make sure it's a non-distracting environment. How many people successfully study on their bed? Successfully, anybody? Okay, that works for him. I see you in the hat. Good, anybody else can successfully study on their bed in their room? I can tell you right now, personally, <laughs> me, I cannot. If it works for you, it works for you. But I found that um, when I actually got a space that was good for me on a consistent basis and made it my study space. I didn't eat there. I actually made it my study space. I had this place in the library during grad in graduate school that I used to utilize all the time. Does anybody have like a space like that on campus that they go to and just kind of like go into the zone of doing your work or focusing on your academics, right? If you have that, take advantage of that. If you don't have that, I would recommend that you try to make sure that you put yourself in an environment where it's relaxing, but at the same time, the setting the mood for you to study and focus on your academics. Also, reward yourself. When you are done completing that 10 page paper, you know, a week in advance, you've taken it to the writing center, you've made sure that SARC doesn't have any additional resources, right? You can turn it in and then you can reward yourself, right? How many people um, have like a ritual of rewarding themselves that they want to share? Okay, yes, ma'am, in the back. I reward myself with like snacks. Snacks. Yeah. And doesn't like some good food, right? Yeah. Snack. Any snack in particular that just says yes? Like uh, Starbucks muffins. Wow, Starbucks muffins. She got specific, right? <laughs> the Starbucks on campus. Yeah. Muffins. Okay. Yes, ma'am. does that she yes she rewards herself but she does it in intervals when she awards rewards herself and she doesn't take a long sort of a break right so she said she will watch a 30 minute show 30 minute show and then she will get back to work right so if you watch your 30 minute show you don't watch the whole season <laughs> you watch your 30 minute show and then you get back on task right because i think it can, can serve also as like a stress reliever and then you also reward yourself with chocolate ain't nothing like that Yes. Yes, sir. The My study spot is the, the one in the library because yeah. like it doesn't give you room to like think about anything else. Like you know it because like it's one thing kind of procrastinate. Oh. So like the reward is actually being in the library for me. Like being out of that quiet space and knowing that like I can think about other things is the reward. Oh wow, that's good. So he has a spot that he goes to in the library um, on a consistent basis. That's kind of like his academic cove is what we'll call it. Um, and he rewards himself by leaving the library knowing, knowing basically that he successfully done what he needed to do and accomplished what he needed to, right? Thank you. Anybody else want to share? Well, thank y'all for sharing. I love it. Don't forget to reward yourself. These are also some helpful hints that can also help you avoid procrastination. You want to finish the worst task first sometimes. Right? I said that you can also do the easiest task first if you like, but wh whichever works for you. Um, sometimes getting the hard part out of the way though, it makes you feel 10 times better about whatever project you're on and you're more likely to keep going. 
So I like to start with the hard part first, get that out of the way, and then I feel like I can just kind of ease on down the road from there. You also want to make the job smaller. So we talked about breaking it up. She talked about breaking it up into sort of intervals. And then throughout those intervals, she will reward herself, whether it be with chocolate or maybe you've got some snacks that you like, right? But you can also reward yourself in inter intervals when you break your, your large task down into smaller tasks. Um, also, seek out somebody who has already accomplished what you're trying to accomplish. We talk a lot of the times about mentoring on campus and the import importance of us in general professionals, students having mentors, okay? Look at somebody that maybe it's a professor that you've taken, maybe you like them. Ask them to be your mentor. Let them know what it is that you're trying to accomplish with, whether it be something you're trying to do when you're graduating, maybe you're trying to get a research position with them because you like the research that they're already working on, right? Think about some things that both of you can benefit from when you're considering a mentor, okay? Um, also, don't interrupt yourself. Avoid distractions. When I say avoid distractions, what do you think I mean? Oh, phone, that's the first thing that comes up, right? I ain't even have to say anything. Social media, Snapchat is the worst. It used to just be Instagram, right? We have everything. Okay. Okay. How many of y'all are willing, let's be honest, to turn off your phone when you're studying? To turn it off. Not like, oh, it's on silent, but you can still silently see. <laughs> things up here on your phone. You know what I'm saying? Like, turn it off. If your cell phone is a distraction like that, I would recommend when you're in the study zone mode, text your mom or whoever would report you missing if you don't call it back in an hour. Let them know what you're doing, right? And then go ahead and move forward with accomplishing your task. But you don't want to have any distractions, okay? Less distractions than you can have as possible. Um, also, um, rescuetime.com, that can help you with any distractions that you have. I, that's one of the resources that um, our students have recommended. Also, you can change your environment. Um, you can combine that, of course, like with the one above. Make sure that you're in an environment, maybe on the third floor. You have your little study cove, right? Um, maybe that's where you go. And also create a timeline for yourself. Create a timeline for each of your either assignments, each of your classes. Um, so that you can have an idea of where you are on your project, okay? So when I was talking to you about if you have a project or a paper that's due like at the end of the semester, maybe it's a 10-page paper that you've never done before, but we're in the fall semester and it's September and it's not due until November. Do you have time to get a 10-page paper done from the month of September to November? Yes, you do. And when you think about it, you're like, oh, that's plenty of time, right? But think about how much time you really are going to have if you break that big 10-page paper task down, starting in September week one. Maybe you will talk to this professor about, touch base with the professor about what he expects out of the assignment. Maybe week two, you'll go to the library and look up two articles because you need a total of 10 references, right? Those are just some of the things I just want you to kind of get in your mind when you're thinking about how to break down a task, okay, or break down a big project. That's what I mean when I say create a time. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to add in terms of procrastination? Some tricks or some things, some nuggets that you can give us that we can take away from this? Yes, sir. Having a, having a calendar with like your assignments written down on it, if you can see it a lot easier than trying to mentally remember you have a test coming up in four days. Four days in your head doesn't necessarily look like four days on a sheet of paper that you can't get it out of your head. I agree. Thank so. you. So having a calendar of some sort, Maybe it can be like an in-person calendar, or maybe you can also have it on your phone if you're more of a digital person. Yes. Workshop that we do, um, getting A's using time management workshop. 
And at that workshop, we break down for you and give you a um, sort of like an activity sheet so that you can write down everything it is that you do. When I say everything, I do mean everything. So it's like from TV time to any sports organization that you're involved in, any class time that you'll have, any time you need to study, right? TV time, it is a breakdown of everything because that's how your life is. It really is. You need to make sure that you um, can visually have an idea of what you're doing. Yes, ma'am.
evaluations you may have, just leave them at the end of the table and I'll come collect them. Anybody watching online, thank you for live streaming. Here's the actual workshop title and then also the date along with my name in case you need that information as well.
your evaluations on the table or just pass them down from one end and I will pick them up. Thank y'all. Y'all enjoy your day.